Welcome everyone to the second lecture. Uh, in the first lecture, uh, just before we pause for our break, uh, or we took a break, um, uh, we were studying the last chapter, chapter 14 in Receiving God's Guidance. We were looking at a few practical instructions uh, for us uh, so that we can order our lives uh, you know, in such a way that we can receive uh, his God's guidance correctly and accurately. So some of the things that we looked at was staying on the side of caution and taking risks in faith, uh, staying with the uh, God's last instruction and avoid being self-driven and stubborn. And uh, the next one we will look at avoid being uh, aimless. Now, when we talk about, you know, surrendering and yielding our lives to God and uh, being uh, and living in obedience to him, you know, some people uh, swing to the other extreme where they fail to take responsibility and therefore end up living life aimlessly and purpose, uh, purposelessly you know, without any purpose or uh, living life aimlessly. And they have this uh, wrong notion that planning, strategizing, you know, preparing is an expression of self. And hence, you know, uh, we shouldn't be making any plans and preparations. Uh, we just have to discern what uh, situations and circumstances God is orchestrating and we just need to uh, step into that. But uh, we learn from scripture that even as we seek God, guidance and direction for our lives you know um, it's not something that we just wait around doing uh, nothing but you know uh, even as we wait for God in the Kronos time to take us to the Kairos time you know we need to work hard we need to plan strategize and prepare ourselves to see his purpose being fulfilled in our um, life okay so um when we plan and we work according to his guidance and do what he's requiring us to do, you know, in the preparation time, in the Kronos time, you know, uh, we see that he will work out his plan and will, will direct our uh, steps. Like it says in Proverbs chapter 16, verses 3 and verse 9, uh, 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 it says, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. So uh, just because, you know, God has led us and directed us to do something, it does not mean, you know, the road is going to be very easy and comfortable. Uh, we would have to work hard. Uh, there will be struggles. There will be temptations. There will be hindrances. But we need to exercise patience, uh, in, uh, diligence, uh, be uh, uh, an endurance, even as we work out God's plan uh, for our um, lives, you know, and... Um, even as uh, we are led by him, guided by him, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, do what he has asked us to uh, do, okay? We also need to avoid uh, distractions. Uh, we must learn to stay focused on what God has called us to do. Uh, there can be distractions that come about. Satan can bring about distractions. Uh, we can be distracted because uh, uh, our own uh, carnal nature, fleshly nature is crying out for attention, is asking us to do some things that is driven by self, you know, lustful passions uh, or uh, uh, cravings of the flesh, desires of the flesh. And all of these distractions can tend to waste time, uh, you know, waste our energy and uh, uh, the resources on things that we were not supposed to be doing. But um, when we have received God's direction, we need to follow through, you know, uh, 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 even if there are distractions, we need to ask God, you know, if this is from him or this is discern, whether it is from God, whether it is God leading us uh, or whether it is uh, coming from Satan or it's our own uh, uh, flesh that is crying out uh, to satisfy its own, uh, uh, you know, fleshly desires and uh, passions. So even as we receive God's direction, we need to follow through it. Don't add things uh, to it, uh, which God never intended for us. 
uh, don't try to copy what other people are doing, you know, and also uh, lay aside every uh, sin, uh, every other unnecessary distractions that and sin that is weighing us down, that is controlling us, that is distracting us, that is slowing us down, you know, and just run this race with a focus, okay? Uh, the other thing is that sometimes, you know, we think that um, uh, when we are waiting on God uh, to bring us to the Kairos moment, uh, it means that, you know, it's a time where we don't do anything. No, waiting on God does not mean a time of uh, inaction. It doesn't it does not mean, uh, you know, we are should be in a state of being passive. Uh, but waiting on God is a time of actively pursuing and doing things that he has um, he wants us to do in that waiting time uh, whether it is uh, you know preparing ourselves or whether it's the other things that we have uh, uh, mentioned already so it is important that you know um, that we are active and not passive and sometimes our inaction our, and our indecision uh, prevents us from receiving uh, God's direction in our uh, lives and um, you know, we complain that, you know, God is not leading us and God is not directing us. But, you know, it's because we are not doing anything. We're just waiting, uh, saying, you know, God will do things. He will orchestrate circumstances. He will bring about everything. You know, I'm just waiting for that moment. No, you know, we need to engage. We need to do what God is asking us to do. We need to be uh, aware of what he's asking us and uh, be active in what he's asking us to do. Now, sometimes we just sit back and not do anything, you know, uh, but we need to you know, it's like uh, we're in a vehicle. Uh, we're just waiting for God to drive us. No, he doesn't do that. You know, we need to get the handbrake off. We need to start the ignition and we need to step on the accelerator, keep moving, and God will uh, guide us and lead us step by step. A good example that we can look at is in Genesis chapter 24, you know, um, uh, Abraham's servant was asked to go and look uh, for a, 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 a bride or a wife for uh, uh, Abraham's son Isaac. So we see that, you know, uh, the servant does, just does not uh, sit in the place where he is or continue engaging in his daily tasks um, and just praying and asking God what to do or to just bring the wife um, uh, for his master's son Isaac. But we see that, you know, he takes the necessary steps. Uh, he sets out on his uh, mission. He goes to, uh, uh, you know, Abraham's uh, uh, place where, uh, you know, he, his relatives are. And even as he goes on this mission, he prays and asks God to grant him uh, success. And what is his testimony? Uh, you know, it says um, in verse 27 of chapter 24, it says, As for me, being on my way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's uh, brethren. Okay. So uh, what do we learn from this? You know, if we desire to receive God's guidance and direction in our lives, we must be not only in a place of, uh, 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 not only in a place where we are ready to be obedient and submissive and yielding, but also where we are ready to act and do what he wants us to do, you know, and um, engage in things that he wants us to uh, engage okay and also have this attitude uh, even as we go before god uh, saying god you know i'm here uh, even as i'm waiting on you you know i'm ready to do anything that you're telling me to do uh, here am i god send me or here am i god uh, you know show me what i need to do how i need to prepare myself what are you teaching me through this uh, chronos uh, time um, frame uh, what are the heart attitudes that you want me to uh, 
uh, change? Uh, what are the sins that you are asking me to overcome? Uh, you know, what are some of my uh, attitudes and motives that you want me to change? So, you know, that is what we need to go before God with that attitude. And that's what we need to tell him and not go before him with this attitude saying, God, I'm here uh, just to be with you. So don't tell me to do anything. You know, that's not what uh, that's not the attitude that we need to have. But to say, God, I'm ready. I'm willing. Show me what step I need to take uh, next. So when we are in this posture of waiting, God speaks to us. He guides us and he directs us on the next step. And it will be a time of action and learning and uh, moving on into the Kairos moment that he has planned for us. Another thing that we need to do is, you know, um, avoid uh, dwelling in the past, uh, you know, and look ahead. You know, uh, Paul writing in uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, he says, you know, uh, I forget those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things that are ahead. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ uh, Jesus. So, um, even as we journey through life, we would all go through some mountaintop-like experiences. And, uh, you know, we would also go through some times where uh, there have been challenging seasons of our life, difficult seasons in our life. But as Apostle Paul said, we must learn to forget the things of the past and keep reaching forward to what is ahead. You know, we just cannot keep living in the glories of the past. Uh, neither should we be you know, uh, keep mulling over or just keep focusing or trapped in our disappointments, tra tragedies, hurts and failures of the past. But we need to, you know, uh, uh, let go of all of those things, forget the things of the past. Of course, you know, don't forget the lessons, the precious lessons that you have learned and, you know, continue on towards the finish line that is ahead of us and not behind us. So we must um, all, you know, move together towards the goal or each one of us need to move towards the goal uh, that is ahead of us towards the finish line um, that is set for us uh, and what God has uh, planned for us. So release the past. You know, uh, stay afresh. Uh, God can make all things new. Uh, amen. Uh, you know, he can just uh, help us to, you know, uh, he can redeem things that are there. He can strengthen us, refresh us, you know, energize us to go ahead um, and, you know, just receive his guidance and keep moving ahead. Uh, the, fu the future is far greater than what we have even imagined. And uh, let you know, uh, the Lord lead you into the highest and the best for you. Okay. So this was uh, the last chapter in receiving God's guidance. So we've uh, finished with the book, uh, receiving God's guidance. Uh, if you have any questions, you have any doubts, you need any clarity, um, in what is thought you can uh, post your questions, your queries, your doubts. Uh, all the in-person students and the online students on this, uh, go in the Google Classroom and uh, the e-learning students, you can post it on the discussion tab and I will do my best to answer your questions or clear your doubts, okay? Uh, we'll move on to the next publication. The last one that we have, uh, that we will be studying is, uh, you know, uh, Code of Honor. Now, Code of Honor is basically written for those who are in um, uh, in full-time ministry, okay? And it's, um, it's talking about, you know, ethics, personal standards, and practical wisdom for men and women in Christian ministry. So please don't tune off if you're not in Christian ministry, if you're not in full-time Christian ministry. Uh, but each one of us are called a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. So we are, every believer is a minister of God. So whether you're in full-time ministry or part-time or you're serving in church, 
or you're part of a prayer group, a cell group, or a leading one, you know, is also ministry. But even if you're not doing any of those things, you know, it's a good time for us to learn how we need to live our lives as uh, believers. Uh, and, you know, before God calls you into ministry, whether it's full time or part time, you know, these lessons here uh, can be helpful, um, uh, you know, to uh, to prepare yourself for ministry. And for those of you who are already in ministry, these things can enable you and strengthen your walk and uh, your calling in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So the first lesson is about personal life. Um, uh, we'll, we'll look at um, the first lesson. Now, ministry is really an overflow of what God is doing in us uh, personally. Uh, so ministry is basically an overflow of our intimate personal time and relationship with God. And hence, we need to take our personal walk with God very, very uh, seriously. Uh, and so uh, we are going to look at a few standards that we will discuss here in this chapter that we must hold on to, uh, you know, uh, that we must hold ourselves personally accountable to and choose to maintain uh, in our personal life. So we're going to be looking at a few standards that uh, we will be discussing here uh, and those that we must hold ourselves personally accountable to and choose to maintain in our personal um, lives. Okay. So the first standard is, you know, schedule a daily time in the secret place. Um, you know, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6 says, uh, Jesus says, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret place, uh, uh, sorry, the father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Okay, so true ministry is birth in the secret place, not only true ministry, but true uh, uh, character, spiritual growth. Everything is birthed in our secret place. What is a secret place? Secret place is our place or a time of communion with God through prayer, worship, reading, and meditating God's uh, word. And it's in the secret place, it's during this time with God that God deals with us, he teaches us, he, he uh, encourages us, he strengthens us, he uh, rebukes us, he uh, trains us and uh, corrects us in righteousness and uh, holiness. And he does all of these wonderful things with us in the secret uh, uh, place. And we know that, you know, um, our uh, the life that we live, you know, uh, is or the ministry that we do, or wherever we are working in the marketplace is actually our overflow with our intimate time with God. So we carry our secret place with us or what we have learned, what we have received, how God has corrected us in our hearts, wherever we go all day long. And, you know, what is God has, what God has put in our hearts, what he has taught us, how he is correcting us and how he's been training us to be, the Holy Spirit is training us to be Christ-like, will be seen in us, you know, everywhere that we go, uh, 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 you know, throughout the uh, day. So ministry is simply passing on to others what we are receiving and experiencing in our relationship with the uh, Lord. Now, it takes discipline to maintain uh, a consistent life of uh, secret, uh, sorry, it takes discipline uh, to maintain, uh, you know, um, a consistent life of secret communion with God, okay? So if you want to, you know, uh, uh, maintain this discipline of communing with God day in and day out, uh, you know, uh, on an everyday basis, it requires discipline. And um, how does this discipline come about? You know, maintaining a consistent life of, uh, of uh, communion with God is when we delight in God and, you know, and our heart delights to fellowship with Him. Only then, you know, can we come to a place where uh, uh, we are consistently, you know, uh, meeting with Him, uh, 
you know, keeping that time where we are scheduled to meet with God uh, in that secret place and where communion happens and it's, it becomes naturally, you know, just like, um, you know, uh, if you've noticed, uh, you know, there is when you wake up in the, in the morning, you know, there'll be a consistent time that you usually wake up. I mean, usually it happens, you know, uh, a consistent time when you have your lunch or your dinner, if you're somebody who's very disciplined. Uh, so also uh, it takes discipline uh, to maintain, uh, you know, um, our time of communion with uh, God. So when you uh, how does that discipline come about when you delight yourself in God and you fellowship with him? Uh, you know, then uh, you have this consistent life of secret place communion, uh, which happens naturally and is an, you know, comes just naturally to you. So we must always stay hungry for more of God, for more of his word, his spirit and his work in our uh, lives and this will make motivate us to continually seek the Lord personally and stay hungry for more of him uh, the other uh, standard that we must hold ourselves personally accountable to and choose to maintain in our personal lives is you know uh, you know continuously strengthen our uh, character Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Now, you know, sometimes when we have reached a certain level of godliness in our life, uh, you know, we think that we're not committing sins that, uh, you know, other people are doing, you know, uh, and God is using us in the work of his kingdom and we're seeing results, then we stop, you know, exercising uh, ourselves in uh, godliness. And uh, uh, what happens in the natural when we stop you know, exercising uh, godliness is similar to what happens in the natural when we stop exercising our muscle. Now, for example, you don't use a certain muscle in your body. You know, uh, what happens? You know, that muscle weakens and without us realizing we are not able to move that muscle, whether it's uh, our arms, our legs, you know, uh, we're not able to move it, you know, we're not able to walk or we're not able to hold anything. Why? Because we stop exercising uh, that muscle and that muscle grows weak, you know, and sometimes, uh, uh, you know, without even realizing it, it just happens. So the same is true in our spiritual lives and our character. We must regularly keep a check on our character uh, and our character. What is our character? Our character is our moral fiber. It, our character is something uh, who we are, uh, who we are when nobody is watching us, who we are in the secret, in the quiet uh, places of our room where nobody is seeing and watching us. Our character is also our ability um, you know, to stay aligned uh, to the truth of God's uh, word, okay? And our character is developed over time, even as we obey God and persevere through various circumstances. Now, our character will never rise beyond the level of our obedience to God. So we must be careful and watch over our character and, you know, keep strengthening our uh, selves. And how do we do that? Uh, we do that by inviting the work of God, um, you know, um, even as we spend time in God's word, uh, inviting the Holy Spirit to cleanse us, to wash us, to purify us, to sanctify us, you know, and um, also, you know, uh, the influence of godly people in our lives um, and uh, you know, continuously also uh, get ourselves to rise up to new levels, uh, you know, uh, where we are able to strengthen ourselves in our uh, character. And we must continuously, you know, increase our capacity in this area uh, where we are keeping a watch and we are growing in new levels of uh, strengthening our character. Now, just because we are believers, we are born again, or we are in Christian ministry, or we are serving in the church, you know, uh, it does not mean that we will be uh, free from temptations, that, you know, there will be no sin that will uh, attack us, um, 
Uh, but the reality is, yes, there will be, you know, new areas where we need to raise up our defenses and be on our guard uh, because Satan can attack us in any area where we feel we are strong, we are confident. And hence, we need to continuously, uh, you know, strengthen our character uh, in, uh, in in every uh, area, in every front. Um, and that's this is what Paul, Apostle Paul um tells us, he tells us that even after receiving great revelations, even after doing so much for the Lord, he says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, not that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Okay, so Apostle Paul, you know, being doing so much for the Lord, he says, you know, uh, you know, I uh, not that I'm already perfect or attained everything, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus has taken hold of. Me. So that is all. That's something that we need to do. We need to press on. We need to take hold. Uh, we need to let go. We need to be vigilant of uh, the sins in our life. Uh, the the the. Uh, subtle things that the enemy can bring in which can lead us astray from God and we need to take hold of what Christ Jesus has taken hold of us okay another thing that um, you know uh, uh, standard that we must take hold of for ourselves personally or choose to maintain in our personal lives is uh, we need to do things before we teach okay um, um, Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so a very important point of self-discipline that we must maintain in our lives, in our ministry, is that we will not teach something that we ourselves have not practiced uh, first. Okay, uh, so it is important that we walk with God, we align ourselves to God's word, the voice of the Holy Spirit, and out of that experience, we teach and we share with others to do the Say, the credibility of our message is uh, greatly strengthened when people see that you know uh, that we have been living what we have been teaching or uh, uh, what we have been preaching about. Okay, um, now there are sometimes you know we have to preach and teach on aspects uh, purely based on the truth in uh, in God's word or the truth that is presented in God's word although we might not have personal experience in that area. So for example, if you know if you're not married and you have to preach and teach uh, what the Bible says about marriage, then you know uh, we can just go ahead based on the truth in God's word. There are many times I have found myself you know counseling uh, parents, counseling uh, uh, married people regarding marriage, uh, you know things that are happening in their marriage or uh, with children. I'm and I'm not married myself, and I I don't have children, but you know based on the truth in God's word, uh, based on what I have uh, you know seen from uh, different uh, you know. Uh, marriages, uh, the experience in life of people in my own family, in my own uh, parents' life, and also, you know, through other people's life, what I have learned and the truth in God's word, I just, you know, counsel people, I teach, and I also um, preach about parenting and also on marriage. Then, of course, you know, uh, there are times when we have experienced failure in certain areas of our life, but we have learned from those mistakes or we have, uh, you know, asked God for forgiveness. We've come back um, and, you know, we have to share or uh, preach on those areas. Then, you know, we basically uh, share on the truth from God's word, even though we know we've had that moments of failure in the past and, uh, you know, all of these are perfectly fine because, you know, we are called to proclaim the truth of God's word and not our own experience. But yet in those areas, you know, we have realigned ourselves, our will, uh, you know, and ask God for forgiveness. And um, uh, we have begun to practice in those areas or even if we are 
uh, not ex pers have personal experience, we can just uh, teach from the truth in God's uh, word. Okay. The next thing is be a voice, not an echo. Okay. Now, uh, it's important for us uh, to listen, to receive uh, from men and women of God uh, what they are speaking, teaching, preaching, what uh, they are experiencing, uh, you know, in different parts of the world. It's important because God is using them. God is uh, uh, re revealing to them. Uh, God is um, birthing things in and through their lives. So it's important to receive uh, uh, learn and receive from different men and women of God in different parts of the world. Yet, uh, even as we uh, learn from their lives, even as we receive from their teaching and from their preaching, it's important that we just don't simply, uh, you know, uh, recite what they are, have been teaching or proclaiming, but we need to hear, uh, understand, uh, you know, let it become part of our lives first, uh, assimilate that in our own lives, uh, let that become part of our personal walk with God, uh, the way that we live our lives, and then we pass it on to others. If not, it will just be like an hollow echo uh, with no life and power in what we preach and uh, teach. But most importantly, you know, God desires to speak to us. Uh, so we need to preach and teach, uh, uh, you know, uh, what we are receiving, what we are understanding, the revelations that God is giving uh, to us in our in the secret place, in our personal time of communion and fellowship uh, with God, because um, this is very, very powerful. And uh, when we preach and teach what we have received, what we have experienced of God, it's uh, it will not just be an echo, but it will be a powerful voice uh, where the Holy Spirit himself is speaking in and through us. Okay. The next thing that we need to uh, remember in our personal lives uh, is, uh, you know, whether we are ministers or born again uh, believers, you know, or we're doing, uh, you know, uh, part time ministry is keep our lifestyle very, very uh, simple. Okay. Um, uh, so we, uh, when we look at the life of the apostles, you know, they lived a simple and godly life in, uh, in all sincerity and in truth. And so we must also learn to keep our lifestyles uh, simple, you know, uh, while we engage in this world and relate uh, uh, to, this, uh, to the people in this world, you know, we need to influence them uh, with the word of God, uh, with godly lifestyle, with kingdom lifestyle, with kingdom culture, with kingdom values, kingdom morality, and kingdom thinking, uh, uh, so that we can reach uh, people for Jesus Christ, so that when they look at the, our uh, thinking, our lifestyle, our culture, the way that we are living our lives, they will be, uh, you know, uh, they would uh, want to also imbibe kingdom culture, kingdom lifestyle, kingdom thinking, kingdom perspective, kingdom morals, and kingdom uh, values. So even as we re engage and relate to uh, people in this world, we must influence them. We must not get entangled with the things of this uh, world. Like Paul writing to Timothy, his last letter to Timothy says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he, uh, he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So even as we are living in this world, we don't get entangled with the things of this world, but we please our commanding officer who is Jesus Christ our Lord. And, you know, uh, we live such lives that we are able able to attract other people to his kingdom and uh, to Jesus Christ, okay? So everything that we do, we do not for the sake of showing off to people, but, you know, we do it uh, to, you know, uh, point them through our lives to the uh, king of the kingdom and uh, to uh, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. So part of living a simple lifestyle is learning to be content with our earthly possessions. Um, uh, because uh, 
Paul again writing to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 8 says, Godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. So Paul is teaching young Timothy, you know, godliness with contentment is great gain. So when we are living in this world, uh, you know, live a simple lifestyle, learn to be content with what you have. But when it comes to spiritual things, we need to live with a constant sense of holy discontentment. Okay. When it comes to spiritual things, we need to live with a constant sense of holy discontentment. That means we need to constantly, uh, you know, be hungry and thirsting for more of God, for the move of God, for more of the things of God, and more of uh, Christ's likeness uh, to be revealed in our uh, character. While we engage in this world, yes, you know, we look for success, for growth in various, uh, an increase in various fears. Um, uh, and this should be done not to get, you know, more money, more salary, you know, uh, just getting a promotion, an increment. Well, all that is important. But even as we look for all of those things, that should be, the motive should be that, you know, uh, that could further the cause of the kingdom. So God, even as you're taking me to a higher level, higher position, I want to gain this fear, this mountain. I want to be an influence for you, for your kingdom here. And even as you are increasing my salary, God, um, I want to invest in what uh, you have blessed me with for the work of your uh, kingdom. Other than this, you know, the things of this world should not impress us. Uh, we need to set our minds, like uh, Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, we need to set our minds on things above and not on the things of this um, earth. Now, sometimes uh, we feel the pressure, you know, uh, to be something that we are not. You know, if you're not intellectual, uh, we like to pretend to be one. If you're not wealthy, you know, we pretend to be rich. If you're, uh, if you're conventional, we pretend to be trendy, uh, you know, um, unless, you know, I'm not saying don't be trendy, you know, dress uh, poorly no it's important to dress well uh, you know be well dressed because we are serving the king of kings the lord of lords uh, but you know don't pretend you know and people can easily see through our pretenses uh, do not take pride in uh, you know just moving with the elite in society um, having contacts in high places yes it's important that you know we do these things but you know even as we try to do this, our motive should not be, you know, for ourselves, our selfish ag agendas, but to impact people in the high places for the king and for his kingdom. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, but we need to maintain, uh, you know, uh, a good connection with uh, all kinds of people, both rich and poor, both people in the high places and those who are also uh, in the lowest uh, place in the, the, uh, in the ladder or in the sphere of society. Okay, like Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 16 says, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high on high things, but associate with the humble, you know, do not be wise in your own opinion. The next standard that we need to, uh, you know, can we need to set for ourselves or uh, something that we need to um, uh, hold ourselves personally accountable to or choose to maintain in our personal lives is um, sorry yeah is to keep our heart pure and guard our um, motives okay proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life one of the big challenges in christian life is to maintain a pure and a clean heart uh, you know um, it's often very easy to look at uh, the externals and say, hey, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't curse, I don't use swear words, I don't lose my temper easily, and so on. But, uh, you know, God is looking at our inner attitudes, our desire of our hearts, our desires, our motives, and the intents of our uh, heart, okay? So, uh, I like what the 
message bible says about uh, the same the verse in first corinthians chapter 4 verse 5 the message bible reads like this when he comes he will bring into the open and place in evidence all thing all kinds of things we never dreamed of inner motives and purposes and prayers only then will any one of us get to hear the well done of god okay very well said in the message bible so when god comes he will bring to open and place in evidence all kinds of things that we've never even dreamed of and what will he place in the front inner motives of our hearts our purposes you know and uh, everyone will uh, you know based on that god will judge us and uh, based on how we have lived well or been clean in our inner motives we will get to hear well done of god okay so if our motive is to seek our own glory fame and recognition for ourselves um, you know uh, then our heart attitude is wrong and is not right before god uh, and jesus said in john chapter 7 verse 18 he who speaks for from himself seeks his own glory but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true and no unrighteousness is in him so to the extent uh, i seek glory for myself to that extent there is unrighteousness in me okay also uh, you know maintaining lustful thoughts is the same as uh, committing the deed you know we can hide or we can play with lustful passions um, uh and you know we can do that very secretly uh because it's all in our thoughts you know and people will not be aware of it and when we appear before people we can appear before them very holy very righteous but uh god knows you know uh the things that we have been thinking about our lustful passions uh the thoughts uh the things that we have been dreaming thinking about engaging in enjoying in uh you know and god sees that and we have sinned in his uh, sight okay now uh this is something that we also need to uh, keep our uh, uh maintain purity in uh, this is another area that we need to guard ourselves you know the lustful thoughts we need to guard ourselves also another area that we need to guard ourselves is you know um um you know sometimes when we are uh, you know uh, being used by god you know um um uh, you know or we are blessed with uh, god for you know the opportunities that he opens in our lives are uh, sometimes we can suddenly find ourselves you know being filled with envy with jealousy uh you know uh looking at other people other ministers other men and women who god is using them greatly uh you know or uh, men and women in our own city uh, in the ministry and the workplace god is using them uh, uh, greatly then uh, you know we are being used and it can fill our hearts with envy and jealousy and uh, we come to a place where we plan how to compete with them you know how we can outdo them be better than them catch up with other ministries uh, this, this is something that we need to guard ourselves against okay this is very subtle uh, we need to guard our heart and our mind our thoughts uh, against such things uh, another thing that we need to also guard ourselves is against insecurity you know um, uh sometimes uh, when people in our uh prayer group or you know life group or cell group or our church you know uh, uh they go to other churches or they uh, you know they are part of other uh, men and women of god who are hosting uh uh events and ministries you know uh then we get upset we get angry with them and uh, what we do is uh, you know we uh, when we know that hey they're going and engaging themselves with other ministers going to other churches then you know we uh, try to speak bad about those men and women of god um, and we do it all in the name of shepherding or you know protecting our flock um, because we don't want them to go and invest their time energy their finances into other people's uh, ministry and we are afraid uh, you know uh, that uh, those ministries will um, 
you know, overtake our ministry and we will lose out on the people in our specific ministry or cell group or, you know, prayer group. And so we, uh, you know, gossip or bad mouth about those men and women of God, which is something that is um, uh, talks about our own insecurity and we need to guard ourselves against that. Also, you know, um, when people in our own teams or, you know, ministry teams or uh, serving teams in church, they are better than us, they do better than us, they have more creative ideas than us, then we can kind of become very insecure. Uh, you know, uh, we think that they will rise above us and, you know, they will do better than us, than us and people will look up to them than us. And so we become insecure and we try to attack them, try to get them off the team, which is also something that we need to guard ourselves uh, uh, against. Okay. So these are all just signs of a heart that is insecure. Um, and uh, what do we do when we have all of these uh, uh, heart attitudes, which is not right before God? What do we do? Uh, you know, we need to go before God, you know, uh, and we need to judge ourselves before God. We need to be true to ourselves. Uh, sorry. We need to be true uh, to ourselves, true to God, evaluate the inner thoughts and the feelings and the motives and the desires of our heart and our mind, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 31 says, if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So judge your, uh, every time you do something, every time you're saying something, every time you're trying to act on something, uh, you know, say, ask yourself, you know, uh, is this based on what God is telling me? Is it according to his word, his nature, or it is, you know, coming, stemming out or come, arising out of my uh, heart attitude, which is selfish, which is uh, impure, which is insecure, you know, judge yourself and invite the Lord to help you, uh, even as you are in this process of, uh, you know, discerning the thoughts and intents of your own heart. And also what you can do is like the psalmist, you know, prayed, you can often pray and ask, tell God, you know, uh, uh, search me, O oh God, know my heart, try me and know my uh, uh, anxious thoughts and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Psalm 139 was 23 and 24. So we need to constantly, you know, in the secret place when you're communing with God, uh, ask God to search you, to show you if there's any wicked way in you, to cleanse you, to lay that finger, you know, point that finger on those things so that you can change, you can um, realign uh, your will to his will and your attitude that is more Christ-like, you know. Um, if we recognize that our thoughts, feelings, motives, ideas, and desires are not aligned to the heart of God, then we can ask God to cleanse us, invite his purifying and refining uh, fire uh, of his word and his spirit to remove all of those heart attitudes, to burn up everything that's not uh, of him, that is impure, that is unclean, and ask God to work in your lives. Another thing that we can also do is to meditate on God's word regarding those specific areas, whether it is, you know, uh, insecurity, jealousy, hatred, pride, anger, fits of rage, you know, whatever it is, or, uh, you know, uh, impure, lustful thoughts, you know, uh, uh, you know, open up the scripture, look at various uh, scripture passages, meditate on it, you know, read and meditate on those scriptures and ask God to cleanse you uh, and uh, help you to maintain a clean and a pure heart. And, you know, even as you do that, you know, uh, we can all guard our hearts uh, and keep our hearts uh, and our motives pure uh, before God, aligned to uh, God's ways, his word. And also, you know, it will help us guard our motives, our thoughts and desires uh, within us. And when we do that, you know, half the battle is uh, 
uh, one. The last thing that we will look at before we end this class is do not kill your uh, conscience. Now, our conscience is God given. It's our built in regulator that has been placed within us. Like Paul says in Romans chapter two, verse 15, it tells us, you know, uh, when we're doing right, tells us when we are doing wrong. And our conscience also bears witness uh, aligned to the witness of the Holy uh, Spirit. It's basically in our conscience uh, that, you know, the Holy Spirit uh, uh, is enforcing things in our spirit man um, and, um, you know, essentially reinforcing what the conscious in conscience, sorry, essentially reinforces what the Holy Spirit uh, is speaking to us in our spirit uh, man. Okay. Um, and uh, like Paul writes to Timothy when, when he tells Timothy to, you know, raise up or look for leaders and what kind of leaders that he must raise up, he says, uh, you know, likewise, deacons uh, must be reverent, not double tongue, not given too much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. Uh, he writes this in First Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. We looked at it in the previous um, uh, lecture as well. Okay, So for us to walk in reverence towards God, we need to have a clean and a pure conscience. Um, we need to, con uh, you know, um, uh, take control of our tongues, our appetites, our sexual appetites, uh, our ability to stay free from the love of money. Okay, so all of these areas we need to guard, protect, and we need to walk in reverence uh, before uh, God. But if we do not heed the voice of our conscience, when our conscience tells us, you know, when we sneer our conscience, that means when we defile our conscience, when our conscience, we don't listen to our conscience, we go ahead and suppress it, then we kill the voice of our own conscience, then soon, you know, we will end up um, doing things that uh, are, you know, are unholy, uh, sinful, unrighteous, and we will not even feel remorse about it, you know, and that is a dangerous place to be. And that is why we, uh, that is how we see many Christian ministers, you know, who have begun well, end up in grievous crimes like uh, misusing ministry money, you know, lying, murder, scandals, uh, you know, uh, uh, adultery and all of those things because, you know, they have not listened to their conscience. They've gone away and hence, uh, you know, uh, slowly the, the voice of their conscience is suppressed and, you know, they have begun to... Uh, uh, live with their own, you know, uh, ideas, reasoning, excuses. They also bring in, uh, you know, theological justifications uh, be, uh, for their, uh, the things that they are involved in. And Paul warns us that, you know, um, you know, uh, we need to have faith along with a good conscience. So don't reject your conscience. Don't uh, uh, defile your conscience. Listen to your conscience. You know, uh, if not, it's going to shipwreck your faith. Like Paul says, you know, if we reject our conscience, he says we will shipwreck our faith in First Timothy chapter one, verse. Um, 19, and that can cause a major accident in our uh, journey of faith. Um, so keep listening to your conscience, do not kill it. Um, and it is some, something that is very small, a small voice that is speaking, but can make a huge uh, difference. Because if you don't listen to your conscience, your conscience can be dead in that area. And you know, whatever you do, you will never be able to know that you're going away from God, you're sinning, and that can bring your uh, downfall. So we'll stop here. Uh, thank you, everyone. I think I've gone way beyond time. Uh, thank you for your patience. And uh, if you have any questions or uh, doubts, please post it in the Google Classroom or in the discussion. Thank you, everyone. God bless.